So if you want to stick around, we'll go over the Q&A. I'll answer all your questions the best of my abilities. I also want to talk about uh, a Voyager update and that 50 million. I think that was wrong, but we'll go over that in the Q&A. So if you got to take off, take off. Uh, thanks for coming by. If not, stick around. We'll do a little Q&A. Also, before you go, like and subscribe. I like this stuff. And Q&A. Look at this banner out of here. Whew. What'd I miss? Laser disc. Yeah, sometimes, um, guess what? The best technology doesn't win. Uh, Laser disc was ahead of its time. And what, what uh, won out? VHS. If you're old, you remember that. Yeah, look at that. David Allen, my ex's parents are in their 90s. They live in Puerto Rico with no power. Very common. There's a lot of problems in Puerto Rico. Just between us, there is some corruption. It's government. There's always going to be some corruption. But it just astounds me that in 2000, was it 17? When, when Maria came through, knocked everything down, they got a massive amount of, of influx uh, to repair that grid, that the grid still sucks. It's really bad. Like, I think it's even worse than it was before. So I'm like, I don't get it. Five years, lots of money, nothing really changed there. So that's why I'm like, don't give to the government, just give to the local agencies like that, you know, uh, World, what was it called? World Central Kitchen and Pro Techos. Because at least, you know, that the, that the local people help the local people. Other ones kind of suck. So yeah. Chewy says, been through two tornadoes, lots of destruction. Yes, I've been through one myself. Pretty awful. <laughs> one Game Boy. One VHS player. <laughs> well, Mr. Wolf, we know. Imagine if a judge told the Fed to produce documents of what is backing the US That's the beauty of it, right? It says right there. It's backed by the full faith and trust of the US government. <laughs> that's what backs it, and that's it. The thing is, though, is that behind the scenes, there's a little backing of the US government and our GDP and how we do world trade. So like if you do, well, what is Luna backed by? Well, Luna was backed by an algorithmic stablecoin. So yes, the dollar could crash and it can go to zero and it can go away. I get all that stuff, right? But what's more likely? An algorithmic stablecoin is going to crash and go to zero or the, do the US dollar is going to go to zero? Go take a look at the Dixie right now. Tell me, tell me how weak the dollar is. All right. <laughs> Ah, interesting theory. Luna failed because the hedge funds that had their hands and everything wanted it to do. They'll want nothing to do with it. I know a couple of the hedge funds that were involved and uh, they were pretty happy with the gains that they were getting. And they did not, I will, not all of them wanted to fail and uh, a lot of them lost a lot of money. Just saying. Dez will be waiting for a sensor. Peppering's where it's at. Cardano haters. Everybody, look, nobody likes, very few people like, that's not true. It's just like, you can't like Cardano and you can't like Ethereum. It's like, a, I don't know, it's dumb. I like both of them. I don't understand the problem. When capitulation, that's the, that's the question. When pivot is a bigger question. Oh, so the thing I was going to talk to you guys about, about um, the, the Voyager uh, that bid process that came through. There was Binance and FTX. Apparently, they're leading the way. And when it came out, it was just, um, first of all, there's been no official announcement. We won't know exactly what it is until October 19th or the 13th. I can't remember the dates exactly. It was supposed to be September 27th, but they pushed that back to October to the official announcement. And from what I understand, I was in the um, uh, Twitter spaces. It was with Simon Dixon talking about how we could do better. And then somebody who was in there that uh, follows the, the, the case closely said he looked through all the documents and they said that the $50 million that was there, first of all, we don't know if that's actually true. And second of all, that could be 50 million over uh, what they actually had to do to pay for everything. So it could, I don't, because when I looked at it, I'm like, if it's 50 million for all the assets and we took a look at the assets, we just, we, we broke it all down. There was over, uh, it was $1.2 billion uh, with the loans that were recoverable, excluding Three Arrows Capital. So like it had 648 uh, billion in crypto, 
It had 270 in, uh, in loans out and some other different parts of where their assets were. So I'm like 50 million. I think that was what they were talking about as far as like it was over the asking amount. But again, these are all just hearsay. Nobody really knows the exact stipulations of what's going on. And uh, we'll wait for the right uh, information moving forward. Uh, <laughs> I can't, can't wait to take probably 100K and thank my financial dad, Rob. And see him in the pool. I'll jump in the pool. Anchor protocol. Blech. Giovanni. I don't trust Charles. You're, you're smart to, to not to. Don't trust anybody. Everything's a scam until proven otherwise. Don't trust anybody. You'd be a lot better. <laughs> Novogratz with his tattoo again. Hey, I'll give it to him. You know, when Novogratz, he had that nice, uh, the Luna wolf howling at the moon, whatever. At least he came out and he said, look, this was a huge mistake on my part and the people that, uh, um, that uh, took a look at this. And he goes, I'm going remember, I'm to remember this day and I got a nice tattoo to remind me every single day of the things that I should and shouldn't do. You got to tip your hat to somebody who can come up and say that. Good question. Mike says, why did Jamie Dimon say that all crypto was a scam? Because that's what he believes it is. It's very interesting, though. There was, it was a, it, it was a hearing, and they had all the different, different bank representatives in there. And they went down the line, and Jamie Dimon, they were asking him some pretty deep questions. I was listening to it this morning. Very boring. Don't, don't listen to it. But they asked him, they said, you know, what do you think about, you know, as far as crypto? And he did talk about it. He goes, look, he goes, he goes right now, he goes, some people believe that, that China is in the, in the forefront and they're beating us. He goes, in all honesty, with crypto, he goes, we need to be ahead of that, ahead of them uh, to keep, you know, everything in line. And then he talked about, and then they talked about, because when he says crypto is a scam, because um, he believes that nothing's, and let's be honest, what we talked about yesterday, how many scams are out there in crypto world? How many rug pulls do we got to go through? How many things do we have to, and then people will say, well, Rob, if you don't like it, get out of crypto. Look, I'm just telling you, there's a lot of scams out there. There's a lot of rug pulls, especially in DeFi. And we just talked over one yesterday, two point something, uh, $4 billion over the last couple of years have been lost. People have lost their money just because of, of these scams. So when he talks about it's full of scams, he's not far off, must be honest. But, um, but they, they talked about uh, JP, not JP, JP coin, JP Morgan coin, and about how it's, how it's progressing. And so you have to understand that he has his own vested interest. So he's like, yeah, crypto, this crypto sucks, but the crypto that we're making is pretty awesome. Classic, classic. Yeah, swing in both ways, something like that. Excited for Cardano Summits. Bullish on TGI Fridays, who isn't? Cardano's the future, as it will be. I think there's a, there's a room for many of many of players. Chili's perhaps, who knows? Hmm. Charles said he would love to see Salon become a side champ. I don't know. I'm not sure if that's true, but it was interesting. Uh, yeah, Jamie Demon called crypto a policy scheme. Well, let's be honest, there has been some policies going around, has there not? But uh, however, let's not let the banks off without, you know, a free hook. I mean, how many times are they going to manipulate the uh, metals market? How many times are they going to open up bank accounts and, uh, and you know, for, for Wells Fargo to do that and move there? And then how many times are they going to actually, I don't know, launder money? Uh, look at Credit Suisse. So it's not like they are the shining white knights out there. It's just if you get mud slung at you, you got to sling harder back. It's called deflection. It works out pretty well. <laughs> Bat pangolin. Where's my wrench? Next time. So close. <laughs> In the bear market, my chili's went six. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Hi, Rob. Would you dare jump in the swimming pool of Bitcoin? Just okay. No. No. I do jump in every day, though, no matter what the temperature is. Mm -hmm. This is a good point. Corporate crypto says DAI is the original TUSD and has never depegged so far. 
The original over collateralized and battle tested stable USDT and USDC are backed by debt. So with USDC, if you want to say the dollar is equating to debt, then you can you can make a case there. But Alaire, the CEO, came in before Congress and said, look, here's all the financials that you want to see. You can see how much we're actually that are pegged to different assets. And you can take a look. And the same thing with uh, uh, the Binance stablecoin. So you can say it, but uh, again, there's a law that's not passed yet or a bill that's coming through that uh, wants to see everything backed by something. I will go there. And you, you can use the argument, but it's back, you know, we can use it by, it's backed by debt, just like the US dollars as we can, as we can uh, print freely. The difference is, is that there's no crypto that is the reserve currency yet. And if people say, but Rob, Bitcoin will be the reserve currency of the world. Sure, maybe. But then XRP says, we'll be the reserve currency. Maybe. And then Ethereum and Cardano and just name, just go down the list. Uh, I don't know. But uh, all fiat currency has gone to zero. It's a, it's a fact just uh, throughout the whole history. The question is, will the dollar collapse tomorrow or in a thousand years? I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> I like Logan. He says, you invest in Cardano because they take the slow calculated approach. Uh, that's kind of true, but it seems Charles is kind of lame. And so are the dApps on Cardano. Hope I'm wrong though, because I'm invested in that peer review. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, I always used to, used to give guff to IOHK and Charles and everybody there in Cardano because they were so damn slow. But then when I'd see like all the rug pulls and different things that were going on, I'm like, hey, it's not so bad of an idea. And it just takes a long time. So I kind of see it as like building a foundation, but it would be nice for a little adoption. And that's the whole point of Basel, to make things a little bit easier for those dApps developers to actually build on top and uh, make those killer apps. Because it doesn't matter how great it is and all these things, it really just comes down to use cases and adoption. Can they get that? I sure hope so. Let's see. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Rob, how many hours before Basel complete? So it starts in three hours, but remember, it also, it's supposed to end on the 27th. It's a five-day process. So just be aware. Hmm, David says a good point. I'll reload up on ADA when it hits 20 cents again. Probably is going to happen. Rug pulls are killing Bitcoin. Rug pulls are killing everything. And also the lies and the schemes and the scams really hurt this whole industry. It's very hard to get large institutions and sovereign nations and pensions to come in here when things just are like, whoops, we lost all your money or sorry, we're insolvent, you know? I know people, some people don't care. They're like, we don't care. We don't want that in there. I want people in there. I want that to, to happen. I want it to come in. Because I think it's good for mass adoption. Now, having said that, remember this. Institutions aren't here to uh, change the world. <laughs> They're here to change their bank accounts. So we love them when they come in. But remember, they'll sell. They all sell. Hmm. How many? Yeah, that's right. That's right, Crypto Keeper. How many fines has JP Morgan Chase racked up over the years? Never mind, Eva. Exactly. But you have to understand, it's just the cost of doing business. If you make $10 billion and you get charged a billion, hey, still got $9 billion. I'd do that all day long. BitBoy said that Sam Bakeman Freed is working with the regulators to do something to ruin crypto for the rest of the market. Well, I mean, if he did do that, but it hurt his business in the short term, but maybe in the long term, he could be like the Amazon and be like, oh, you failed? Well, that sucks. I'll buy you for pennies in the dollar. <laughs> Who knows? Free market, right? Look, we all like freedom. That's why we like Bitcoin. And uh, if that is what it is, even though it's straight up manipulation, that's uh, the free market. Sad, but true. 
it's, I'm just a realist. That's just what it is. <clears throat> yeah, there goes Chewy. Jupiter Mojo, one new PR green screen. October, October, going back. Can't wait. Might even donate my time back into the uh, medical field. Who knows? Did you know? This is more for like Beardy and me. I was, we we're watching, a, it was a CN, C, CNBC or ABC morning review, whatever, whatever it was. But, the, but they, they talked about uh, salaries in Puerto Rico. One of the ladies who was a registered nurse at one of the clinics, a registered nurse, is making $800 every two weeks as a salary. I was blown away. A friend of mine works in the uh, pharmaceutical companies. He makes roughly $10 an hour. And it's like a pretty like high up job. I'm like, what the? That is, there's a reason, like if you look at all the states in the, in the US, the, the poverty lines, and, and, we, and we covered this in the, in the Puerto Rico video, the poorest, if you, it's not a state, I get, I get it. But out of all the ones, I think one of the poorest is um, Louisiana or Kentucky as far as the poverty line. And it's, you know, uh, whatever the rate is, uh, I want to say 12, 13%. But in Puerto Rico, you're looking at almost 30% poverty. It's, I don't know how people make it over there because it's expensive to live there. Anyhow, it's a tangent. Something's got to be done. <sighs> Thanks, Pokey. I stake my Ada with Rob. Hasn't been disappointed. Fantastic. Link in the description. Mm. <laughs> Grandpa Rock, DCA hodl and stake. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And next got a good point. He says, Rob, I stopped DCAing. We'll follow Ben Cowan for now. Cash is king. There's two, there's like, you know, that the DCA show we do with it's uh, me, James, and Ben we're like on this spectrum and Ben is like, I'm not buying anything. I'm just waiting for this inevitable crash to come. And James is like, it's going to be good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back up the truck and buy some things. He's more of a trader though. And I'm kind of like right in the middle. I'm like, I don't know if it's going to crash, crash, or if it's just going to move sideways forever. So I just, I continue to dollar cost average, but a lesser amount than what I would usually do. And then I wait for things to go down. If Bitcoin goes on to 15K, then I double up what I'm dollar cost averaging uh, for everything. And if, if the altcoins uh, drop by another you know, 50%, then I increase it. It's just called dynamic DCing. I'm not for sure. I'm not smart enough to figure it out. I just know that uh, over time, the crypto market's not going to zero. That is one thing I'm pretty sure about. But who knows, maybe it could. But there's just so much money in there. Yeah, I mean, we just took a look at... Uh, uh, BlackRock and Fidelity and and Charles Schwab and somebody else, which is like, it equals like $22 trillion assets under management and they're all getting into crypto. Isn't it amazing how they get into crypto right now when it's when the market is sucking? Smart money or big money, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> she says, they won't sell before me. Eh. Yes. How? What's a trillion among friends? Still waiting for my t-shirt, Ben. Uh, da, 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 da. Thoughts on Gemini stablecoin? Nope, none. Yeah, Pokey, Poke Nachos. Speaking of pennies on dollar, both CZ and Sam bid 50 million for Voyager. Again, I, I don't think it's 50 million for the 1.2 billion assets. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, and nobody really knows. We won't know until the official announcement, October 13th or 19th. I was getting it wrong. <laughs> Aquan, please remember the U.S. does not own crypto. Regulate as much as you want. The rest of the world doesn't care. That's true. And that's why, like, in other parts of the world, you can still get XRP. You can still do whatever you want to. It's just that, uh, unfortunately, America's a big, big piece of the puzzle, Right. Not a big piece of pie, a big piece of the pie as far as uh, global economy. So you'd want them to be involved if even just a little bit because that's where a lot of money is. Just the truth. Do you think this is the bottom? I don't. But even if I, because I, I don't believe this is the bottom, 
I don't dollar cost average as much as I used to. I still think we've got a ways to go to go lower, but I could be wrong. We could be chopping sideways for a bit. Because some people say like, well, I mean, they're like, we've already gone through these uh, insolvencies. We've already gone through these Fed rate hikes. We've already gone through uh, the automotive industry kind of a little bit uh, pullbacks and the housing market pullbacks. So what else is left? And I got to tell you, a lot's left. There's a lot of different, there's a lot of more pain that uh, we can see. Uh, you've never seen pain when... Uh, uh, people start defaulting on their homes and uh, they have no place to go. And then, of course, I mean, the one saving grace, though, is that there's a lot of job opportunities out there. But I think um, I think that'll start to evaporate at some point. And then, of course, um, the Fed's not going to stop pivoting or, or not going to stop, not going to stop raising. So if they keep raising the rates, then everything else goes up, more difficult to afford, and then we have a risk of stagflation or deflation. So I think there's a lot of problems up on the horizon. I just don't see how the macro supports it. And remember, the Fed still has, still, still has yet to really tighten, quantitative tightening. What goes down must come up. Oh, yeah, tomorrow's DCA. Whew. Mm. Wow. Tell me I'm in uh, Kyrgyzstan, recently invaded by Tajikistan. Okay. Yeah, being a European, we have some other stuff to engage. I feel sorry for all Europeans, especially with the um, electricity prices going up so high. It's ridiculous, ridiculously high. I think that's it. Hawaii also says, I'm Puerto Rican. Try to donate to people to help my family. I left in 2011 after a master's degree and part of my thesis was about the decay of the Puerto Rican economy. And that's the truth. That's it. The sweat coin. Ah, sweat coin question. Thank God. Just kidding. So I come in finance. I don't know. And with that, that is it for today. So look, going up on uh, 40 minutes. So that will conclude the Q&A. So look, everybody, thanks again for stopping by and hanging out with me for uh, 40 minutes or so. I do appreciate it. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, consider subscribing. And that's it for today. Tomorrow, there will be no video on this channel. Uh, we'll be doing the DCA show. i got to check with Ben and James, maybe, unless somebody's traveling. But usually when I do DCA someplace else, I don't do uh, show here. But that's it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one. Adios.